What's up, what's good, what's poppin'? I'm AJ Monroe. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you've been here before, what have you done to make your life better? Sometimes it's necessary for things to end so other things can blossom. It's kind of like what I was talking about in Birds of a Feather. And sometimes the universe is just kind of like pushing us in a new direction. Sometimes it's forcing us to lose something. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. I think that processing grief is super important. You need to understand that grief doesn't always have to do with death. You can lose someone or something and process grief. And I think today we're talking about that. We're talking about five ways to move on, five ways to process that grief, five ways to be a new because that's what we're doing. So I love to live by a phrase. It is, if you can change it, don't worry about it. And if you can't change it, there's no reason to worry about it. So when we're talking about if you can fix it, it's more like if you can put time, effort, and energy to change an outcome of a situation, do that. But don't stress about it as you go along. Do not stress about the outcome because it's not really going to get you anywhere. That's an extra emotion that is emotionally taxing on you that you don't really need at the moment. You need, you need to be focused on figuring out a solution and executing that solution. When we're talking about not being able to solve the problem, when we're talking about when things are extrinsic, when things are out of your control and everything around you is crumbling and you didn't really do it, but you didn't really, you know, you can't really change it. That is something also that's just more stress on you. You just need to be focused on making the next right step in order to change your situation other than worrying about things that you cannot change. Things like death, things like the coronavirus, things like your best friend moving away. Those are things that you can't control. Those are things that you can't change. So there's no reason to worry about them. Focus on making the next right step in order for you to blossom. Sometimes we are worried about something that's going on over here when in all actuality we are supposed to be over here. We're just spending so much time stressing about something that we can't change, something that's not supposed to be in our life anyways, that we miss an entire blessing. Uh, that just passed us by. So while step one isn't necessarily a way to move on, it's more of a mindset, it's still something to work towards in the right direction. Let yourself feel everything. As men, we all too often think that wearing our heart on our sleeves is a sign of weakness, and that's not true. The fact that we aren't letting ourselves feel everything, we aren't truly moving on. We're just bottling up and repressing emotions that are then left to manifest another day at the wrong moment, at the wrong time. How many times have you held on to hurt from an old relationship and then you ended up going into another relationship, a good relationship with a good person who you should have been with, but you still held on to that hurt. You never let yourself feel the hurt from your last relationship and that hindered you. So now you lost out on something that could have been great. Hey. Hit it. So number three is actually an active um, tip. And we all know I love active hobbies and that is what I'm recommending in this list of moving on and dealing with grief. Find something to replace that time. I am not saying find something to distract yourself. I'm praising healthy distractions. Pick up something new. Not to piggyback off the old saying, but the best way to get over one is to get under a new one. But it's true, find something new to do. And I will always praise a healthy distraction. I am not talking about go out there and find something new to take up your time um, so you don't have to grow, so you don't have to think about the hurt. What I'm saying is if you went through a breakup, um, don't necessarily get under someone new, find a new hobby, replace that time that you were spending with this thing that you now have to grieve, with this thing that you now have to get over, this thing that you now have to move on from and continue living your life without, um, find something to replace that time, something healthy, something that will help you become better. And it's super important to find something to do uh, outside of whatever you're grieving, especially if you are grieving a person who is still here. I cannot tell you how often we tweet about going back to toxic partners. We talk about going back to jobs that aren't good for us. And we need to learn that it's, it's okay to replace these things and replace them immediately. Because if you're not finding anything to do, if you're sitting around, if you're moping around, um, 
it's so easy for us to backslide, backtrack, and go back to these things that aren't good for us, that aren't healthy for us, and that's just not what we're doing. We are processing, we are moving on, and we are becoming healthier people. So the next item, the next tip on our list is go to therapy. So remember, I am not going to tell you to do anything that I haven't already done myself. This channel was built around me actually doing things and just kind of giving you guys what actually works. So when I say go to therapy, I mean like, go to therapy. Find a therapist, find a counselor that you like, and tell them the truth. Therapy, if anything, is a sounding board. Sometimes you need to get some things off your chest. Uh, non partisan person, you know, someone who's not actively in your life, so you don't really care about their opinion too much, and they can actually help you through your issues at the same time. And if therapy is not an option, find yourself a, a therapist. Find a friend or a family member that you truly trust. Um, internet outlets, you can start a blog, you know, Tumblr is not really popping anymore, so if you don't want people to know, um, not just in Tumblr, I'm still there, I'm still on Tumblr, but um, if you don't want too many people to see that, you know, go on Tumblr and blog about it, talk to a friend about it, talk to your mom, your mom loves you, um, talk to someone who cares about you, because sometimes you have already justified these bad decisions to yourself. So when we talk about moving on, when we talk about needing to do something different, if you feel like backsliding, if you feel like going back to this toxic situation, if you if you feel like um, if you feel like you're you sad and you're bogged down, talk to someone else. And if anything, you just need a sounding board. You just need to get those thoughts out there. You've already justified your stupid decision to yourself, so like you're going to make the stupid decision. But sometimes it takes telling another person out loud, like, hey, I'm gonna make this stupid decision for you to sit back and be like, all right, you know, maybe I shouldn't make the stupid decision. So I'm advocating for therapy forever and always. And last but not least, number five, let time do its job. We live in a new age society where we want everything quickly. We want instant gratification. And so that obviously plays a part in our emotional life that we are expecting to get over things quickly. That we are able to tell, ourself, tell ourselves we're fine and we're fine and we can move on with things, but that's not true. And you can't rush the process. You can't rush your emotions. You can't tell yourself that your feelings are hurt. Take time, if you need time, take it. Don't rush yourself into situations that you don't feel comfortable in, that you're not ready for, because again, that's you blocking blessings, that's blocking things that are supposed to be in your life, but you are trying to take them on too quickly, and you haven't truly processed your grief, you haven't processed your trauma that you've been through, and you fumble in the back. So while, you know, healing may, <clears throat> so while healing may take some time, you not having it all together is completely fine. This is a journey. And at the end of the road, you are gonna be a better person uh, for having taken the time to really truly feel yourself, really truly get over the things that are happening in your life. Moving on and grieving are super important for your growth. You definitely cannot continue to harbor emotions, you cannot continue to repress emotions. You even see that it's coming out today in social situations. So much time has passed where we haven't said anything, uh, where we haven't felt ourselves, where we haven't been able to uh, have an honest dialogue or an honest conversation, and now things are boiling over. I know that's on like a big scale, that's on a societal scale, but just think that that's, that's exactly who you are, that's how you function. You cannot take these things with you everywhere you go because it, the weight of it is heavy. So learn to grieve, learn to process these things, learn to move on from things that aren't great for you. It's gonna help you in the long run. It, this, this process is long, it's arduous. I completely understand it. Sometimes it's a whole lot easier to stay in a situation that you know is not good for you because it's comfortable, it's easy, but like that's, that's not what we're doing here. We are pushing past that, we are doing better. We are putting ourselves in situations 
that we wouldn't normally put ourselves in. So that means, you know, if you feel the need to cry at the club, cry at the club. That's what your body needs at the moment. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It just means that you're a human being. It means that you're alive. So appreciate that. With that being said, I'm AJ Monroe. You have a whole other week to figure out what you're going to do better with your life. I hope that we are spending a lot more time moving on from things that aren't great for us, moving on from things that have hurt us in the past, and moving on from our trauma. I think that is the shadow work that we truly need to be doing in order to grow as people. I know a lot of my each peers put a lot of emphasis into what you are wearing, um, how you wear it. And I understand that that is, you know, something big. I, however, I also think that shadow work is important, which is a big part of my channel. We are doing a lot of shadow works. We are definitely doing seven habits to make, um, to live a better life. We're definitely getting our routine together. We're definitely moving on from things. We are detaching ourselves from toxic connections. This is what we are doing to live a better life because I think that you need to start there. That is the foundation of growth. And I think that after we figure out our shadow work, after we figure out everything that we need to let go in life, then we can move up and figure out what we need to wear. And then we can move up and figure out what we need to drive and there's levels to this. And we're on the first level. All right, well, I will see you guys later. I've talked enough. <laughs>